Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on June 17th of this year, I put a question to, uh, through you to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, and the question was about what additional action we could expect from the government to address the huge deficit in safe drinking water for First Nations, and in particular in Alberta, uh, where a number of First Nations were under su such extreme circumstances, they were forced to actually take the federal government to court. And so I want to take the opportunity today to raise this matter again. I'm not going to address the court, of course, the court action, because I know what the response would be is we can't discuss that matter because it's before the courts. And so it should be. That's where the matter should be resolved. But there are much bigger issues, Mr. Speaker. Um, we have still 17 boil water advisories for First Nations in Alberta alone. And time after time, when these matters are raised, either by the First Nations or by the opposition in this place, we get the same old tired refrain from the government, and that is, the federal government has spent a lot of money on First Nations, as if that should be some kind of appropriate response. Well, Mr. Speaker, I hate to remind the federal government, but they actually have constitutional responsibility for meeting the needs of First Nations, and they also have obligations and commitments under treaty. And so that's just simply not an adequate response. Now, what the government did is they did move forward proposing a, uh, a law that would regulate safe drinking water for First Nation communities. Uh, there were a lot of qualms in First Nation communities about that, but eventually, uh, when, when consultations were held, the Alberta First Nations in Treaty 6, uh, 7 and 8, they said, under a number of conditions, that they would agree to this law. But I'm going to get to that in, in a minute. Now, that law did pass in this place, and uh, unfortunately it's only a framework law. So specific standards to ensure safe drinking water uh, to First Nations um, still are not in place. Perhaps you'd like to intervene, Mr. Speaker, just for a moment. And across the way, they might have a courtesy. Order. Order. I ask all honourable members who uh, wish to carry on conversations perhaps to... Uh, to take them outside to the lobby. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, adjournment debate. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I wanted to make sure my colleague across the way also has an opportunity to hear uh, what my issues are and what my eventual question will be uh, to them. And so the government is moving forward. Uh, the legislation is simply framework legislation. Essentially what it did is simply pass liability from the federal government to the First Nations to begin delivering uh, wastewater services and safe drinking water. Um, but regrettably, um, they still don't have the regulations in place that will uh, say clearly what those standards are the First Nations have to live up to and deliver on. And secondly, still there is no new money. Uh, the First Nations across the country, including uh, Treaty 6, 7 and 8 First Nations, had on condition agreed uh, to support this law. But those two conditions were this on condition that they needed $162 million for water infrastructure, that deficit, uh, faced by Alberta First Nations as identified by the Independent National Engineering As Assessment had to be delivered. So they agreed that they would accept this legislation being imposed on them, even though constitutionally and under the UN Declaration, they are supposed to have responsibility for self-government in determining their own regime for regulation. So they agreed to consent to that legislation on the condition. Secondly, the condition was that Canada develop a satisfactory and adequately funded process for collaborative development of the implementing regulations. Well, thus far, I'm told by the First Nations in Alberta, uh, 6, 7, and 8, that they have been, they've come to a conclusion they have to withdraw from the process because the money has not been forthcoming and they have not been supported in the consultation on the regulations, and so they've withdrawn their support. So my question to the government is, uh, when can the First Nations expect to see this money forthcoming? Uh, the government has only committed $323 million for the whole country, and yet half of that is needed simply to meet the needs of the First Nations in Alberta to enter the 21st century of basic minimum standards provided to their community. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased to rise today to speak to the question of the Honourable Member from Edmonton Strathcona. Let me begin by assuring the Honourable Member that the health and safety of First Nation communities is a top priority of our government. We are committed to ensuring that First Nation residents have access 
emergency assistance services at the same level as those available to Canadians living off reserve. In the case of the recent flooding in Alberta on the Siksika Reserve, our government took swift action, working with the province of Alberta to ensure that the community's immediate health and safety needs were being met. We were in regular contact with regional First Nation leadership and officials also visited the community to ensure they had the support they needed in this very difficult time. Our government, through Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada, has an agreement with the Alberta Emergency Management Agency. This allows Canada and Alberta to work in partnership to support Alberta First Nations in certain emergency situations, such as natural disasters. Under this agreement, our government provides Alberta Emergency Management Agency with an annual funding base of $680,000 for the 2013-2014 fiscal year, and the agency provides emergency management services for Alberta's 45 First Nations, as it does for all other communities in the province. In addition, the agency works closely with Alberta First Nations to build emergency management capacity within their own communities. This is done through a variety of activities, including training and support for emergency planning and preparedness. In additional preparedness work, this fiscal year, our government will provide funding to five First Nations in Alberta to support them in the development of wildfire mitigation strategies. This is a further example of our government working closely with First Nations to build capacity on reserve. Our government continues to partner with Alberta Emergency Management, First Nation leaders, and other emergency partners to help support the emergency recovery needs to the affected communities. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, I want to inform the House that our government has taken action to streamline the process of funding emergency management on reserve and ensure that First Nations, provinces, and territories have improved access to emergency funding when needed by putting in place a single window for securing funding for First Nation emergency costs. This single window came into effect on April 1, 2014, with all eligible emergency management costs on First Nations reserves now being reimbursed to one department, Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada. In order to help implement all that I have just described, our government is making significant investments to protect the health and safety of First Nations on reserve. To that end, Economic Action Plan 2014 provides $40 million over five years, starting in 2015-2016, for disaster mitigation programming in First Nations communities. Mr. Speaker, our government believes that all Canadians deserve to feel safe and secure in their homes, no matter where they live. That is why we are actively working with our partners to ensure First Nations on reserve in Alberta met this rigorous standard. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm left uh, very puzzled. My questions, Mr. Speaker, were clearly about providing safe drinking water to First Nations. Indeed, over the last couple of years, a good number of First Nations in Alberta have suffered deeply because of flooding. And it is, of course, also the responsibility of the government to step in and to provide them with emergency response and, frankly, to, to assist them in building new housing, which was destroyed during the flooding. But the government has absolutely failed to respond to my question, which is about when are they going to step up and provide the funding to meet this hundreds of millions dollar deficit for safe drinking water. This is a completely separate issue and is, of course, occurring in tandem. I don't know if we call the lack of safe drinking water going on for decades an emergency. Certainly it's an emergency of the First Nation families who are trying to provide safe drinking water for their children or to bathe their babies. So I remain puzzled. Perhaps in the response, the government would like to respond to my initial question about when they're going to deliver uh, the promised $162 million to uh, deliver safe drinking water to Alberta First Nations. The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Mr. Speaker, to answer my colleague's uh, question, our government, in fact, has dedicated significant resources towards providing fresh water for on-reserve First Nations, and we have made significant uh, progress to date and will continue to do so. And as I've said, the health and safety of First Nation communities, including timely effective support in times of emergency, is a top priority of our government. 
We appreciate that this is a difficult situation for some First Nations in Alberta, and we continue to work closely with the province. First Nations Emergency Management and Public Health System partners to support Alberta First Nations emergency management activities. We recognize that for those still out of their home communities as a result of flooding in 2013, this is a difficult time. Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada is working with the affected First Nations, Alberta Emergency Management Agency and other partners and is making progress towards our mutual goal to help people return home safely as soon as possible. Our government continues to work to ensure the health and safety of Alberta's First Nations and all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.